Hey guys, what's going on? It's Carl here back with another episode. We are sitting back in the living room today as, as promised over on social. I asked if you guys wanted to see a budget edition of the living room setup all about the TV and I came through on that request and big, big shout outs to Hisense for helping power and sponsor this episode as we do have a full setup under a thousand dollars, which is really tough to find and the TV is quite large at 65 inches. It's actually right there. Let's go. So in my living room before, we've had TVs that have ranged from around 40 inches all the way up to 65. And those have cost anywhere from probably 1,500 to $35,000, $4,000, which is a ton of money if you think about it. I wanted to keep things on the budget scale today to help save you guys a bit more money and just to showcase that you can still build a creative and a beautiful setup that has a very large TV without breaking the bank, which I think we've done in this case. Our panel and the showcase of today's episode is of course the Hisense H8C 65 inch HDR TV. And this display supports HDR 10 for vibrant colors and outstanding imagery. When I've been watching my HDR content, I've been blown away by not only the cost of this panel, but by the crispness and clarity that I'm getting on something that is under a thousand bucks, which I didn't really think before was possible, especially for having a TV that's 65 inches. It's also got a wide color gamut to ensure all of the colors that you're seeing on the TV are as vibrant as they can be. And you can just kind of see that from the quick little demo setup when the TV is on, but you don't have anything running. This has some of the nicest colors that I've seen once again for a TV of this price. The H8C also has motion rate 120 tech built in. So when you're watching stuff like sports, action movies, anything with fast movement, it still delivers without any sort of ghosting or lag. And yes, I do love watching my soccer football for all you Europeans out there. Design wise for a TV of this price, I was pleasantly surprised. There aren't any metal bits. It actually fits perfectly into this setup as we have the glass countertop with these nice chrome accents, chrome. They do pick up a couple of fingerprints, just make sure that your hands are nice and clean, not full of any pizza stains. And around the rest of the TV, the bezels are once again fairly thin, just out of black plastic. And in terms of overall thickness, it isn't the thinnest TV that I've seen on the market. But for most people, once you've mounted this, whether it's on your TV stand or have mounted it to the wall, you don't really take too much notice of how thin a display is, as most people aren't really looking behind your TV and still, Having a TV that thick, to me, isn't a deal breaker. <laughs> you can see behind me, I've got the two consoles, my PlayStation 4 Pro, as well as the Xbox One S that are rocking, and I've been playing games on it all the time. I've been super impressed once again by the quality, especially if you're using this as a gaming setup. You pair this with the Motion Rate 120 tech. This makes an awesome, awesome gaming display. Whether you're playing first person shooters, sports, or racing games, whatever it may be, I will leave both of my gamer tags for Xbox, for PlayStation down below. I haven't been playing as much as I should, but I do promise to play a couple rounds with all of you out there. And to keep things on budget under $1,000, when I set this TV up, I wanted to try it out just using the internal speakers on the TV. Once again, pleasantly surprised, it has integrated sound from DBX TV, which means it is pretty, pretty decent. You do have options to run external speakers or having a sound bar, which will obviously enhance the sound quality. I'm actually using an old school analog setup right through that earphone headphone jack, which seems to work well. But if you're looking to have this just as a standalone TV and use the built-in speakers, I once again, don't think you'll be too disappointed with the output that you're getting. Maybe just a slight bit lacking on the bass end, but it doesn't sound tinny or echoey like most stock TVs tend to do. But if you're really trying hard to stay on budget, keep that under the thousand dollar mark. I think you can do so, especially in the audio department. The remote of the H8C is pretty basic and standard. It's got all the numbers up top with your select selection menu in the middle. It also has these dedicated hotkeys at the bottom for Netflix, Amazon, Vudu, and YouTube, even though most of the time I tend to be rocking those apps on my Xbox One S, but just always nice to know in case you don't have a gaming console, you do have some built-in apps that you can use straight out of your TV. 
So in the end, I think I've successfully created the best budget setup for your living room, including the largest size TV possible. 65 inches is by no means small for the amount of money. Once again, I'm repeating myself that you're paying, you are getting a very impressive panel. One thing that I will say, if you are in a very bright place, kind of like I am with all the windows on the side, once you start going around the side of the TV, viewing angles, you do see some reflections, but if you're just sitting like I am kind of right here, right in front of the TV, even when the sun is at full glare hitting the TV, I'm having no issues and I really haven't had any other complaints. It's kind of really awesome for a thousand bucks. Okay, I hope you guys enjoy the budget edition of the living room setup. I will leave links down below in case you guys are interested. Make sure you stay posted, and I really wish I could give this one away, but I think to repack this and to ship it might be more than the cost of the TV. So remember, links down below, and I will catch the rest of you in one of my next episodes or in one of my next vlogs. Peace!